Yeah. Well, for the JT Tran. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, take that. I'll meddle with it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me here. I'd like to thank Nelson, obviously, for arranging this. Um, loving your Chicago weather, 45 degrees. <laughs> it's like a bit nipply. Um, so, let me talk about me. My favorite subject is me. Um, who here knows, who here has heard of me before? Or knows about the community? A few people, maybe like a quarter. Actually, a pretty good number. Um, I sucked with women, all right? Just right from the get-go. Um, I kissed my first girl when I was 20. Right, I got laid when I was 20 years old. For 20 years, I'd never seen a girl, like a real girl's breasts or anything like that. And so I studied aerospace engineering. Who is in engineering? Okay, I, I am so sorry. <laughs> I went to Florida Institute of Technology to study aerospace engineering, and this is a technical college. There are like 10 guys for every one girl. All right, it was like the most horrible place to go through like puberty and all that. Um, and so what happened was like I, you know, throughout high school, I was completely clueless. I went to prom with a bunch of my buddies. It was very lame. And I remember at, at the age of 20, I had my own dorm room. And a bunch of my friends are watching a movie. We're watching a bunch of movies in my dorm. And one by one, you know, 10 o'clock rose around, 12 o'clock rose around. And all my friends have left. And this one girl stays. I'm like, OK, you know? She wants to see the end of the movie. Fine, it's a good movie. About 2 o'clock, I'm like, oh my god. Finally, so thank you, God. Some girl's going to touch my penis. <laughs> I'm like, awesome. And so um, who's been in that position where the girl has had to hit you over the head that she likes you? Yeah? How many, how many girls have had to like be very obvious that you like the guy? No? Or just, just one? Everyone is very demure. All right, there you go. Now we're getting a little bit. Fair, fair. And by the way, um, this is Gareth Jones, lead instructor uh, for the ABCs, and also voted 2010's best new pickup artist. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking top that. <laughs> Um, let's talk about the real reason why men get into the game. All right. The real reason. Who here wants to have like Hugh Hefner type orgies and lots and lots of sex with beautiful, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> All right, some people are being honest. Okay. Who here just wants like a beautiful girlfriend? Okay, a bit more. I want that too. <laughs> who here wants to, uh, who wants to get married? Bit more, Mar married with kids the entire you know nine yards, not too many. Now who here does not want to die alone? You just don't want to die alone at all, all right? I mean basically that's why we study pickup in its form, is to be with someone. Pickup is simply a form of social facilitation, all right? A lot of guys, you know, for example me and like my students is. We're not out there to be players or assholes or anything like that. Though we may in become, through the process, we may go through that phase. But the reality is we want to be with, with someone. All right? We want to be someone that, uh, at the end of the day, that we love, be with. And of course, if we sleep with a lot of beautiful women, so much the better. All right? um, and statistically, I'm going to address Asians uh, simply because that's, you know, this is an Asian fraternity. Though I teach, I teach all types of men. Um, because of the female, you know, women's revolution and women's rights and movement and all that, there's a changing form of dating. There's different dating strategies. They say um, there are three, women have three times as more sexual partners than in the 1960s, all right? Your, this is not your dad's dating scene or your grandfather's dating scene. I know, for example, that my stepfather, who is from Vietnam and a police officer, who got, he got thrown into a re-education camp before he moved to America. Like, what does he have to teach me about dating? What does he have to teach me about interracial dating? Nothing. All right. So, pickup is a movement that simply reflects the changing times. 
Some people may consider it shady. You know, I am not going to take ownership of all the different stereotypes of pickup artists. Same thing as I'm not going to take ownership of all the stereotypes that Asian men face. The reason why Asian men form 20 to 33% of this industry, I want you to think about this. Uh, Asians are only 5% of America, but form about you know, 20 to 33% of this industry. And that's because 6 out of 10 Asian men will marry an Asian woman. 2 out of 10 Asian men will marry someone else. And 2 out of 10 Asian men will not get married. All right? That's according to the U.S. Census Bureau. And that's not including the fact in 2020, nine years from now, when some of you guys are like in your late 20s, when you're ready to get settled, nine years from now, 2020, there will be 24 million Asian men, Chinese men specifically, but Asian men in general, that have no hope of getting a, a wife, bride, girlfriend because of China's one-child policy. All right? At no point in history has that happened. I mean, you guys wanted to think about it. There's a lot of gender social pressure that's happening. And the rate of interracial marriage um, is increasing for Asian women at a far more significant rate than Asian men out marriage. All right? um, <clears throat> so basically, how I got into this. When I moved um, to California, I had my engineering job, and it was like, you know, really cool. Worked for like NASA and Air Force projects. Worked, worked in mission control centers and all that. And I thought, you know, I have a good job. I'm like driving a Mercedes. I'm living near the beach. This is the life, right? You know, women should be attracted. This is why I did all the things I did. This is why I got like good scores. This is why I busted my ass. And what I realized is, despite how educated or intelligent or outgoing I thought I was, I w still wasn't getting the girl. You know, I'd go on like these blind dates and it would suck. I remember my mom setting, setting me up on a blind date to go to Orange County, okay? And she says, okay, I want you to visit my, my friend. You know, she just picked up this Vietnamese musical instrument, so I want you to go and pick it up. I'm like, okay, it's like an hour drive, but all right, I'll do it. So I go, I, I show up. I knock on this lady's door, I'm like, hi, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Ann's son, could you, you know, I'm here to pick up something. He's like, oh, oh, come in, come in. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, have, sit down, have some tea. Let me introduce you to my daughter. I'm like, okay. Um, so I'm sitting and, you know, she conveniently disappears for like 30 minutes, <laughs> like, you know, shuffling for stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is obvious. And I'm like talking to her. And I'm like, oh, so what do you like to do for fun? It's like, nothing. Do you like to read? No. Do you like to go out? No, I just stay home with my mom. I'm like, this sucks. So it was like this bad day after bad day. And like the girls that I liked didn't like me. And I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what was going on, you know? Because I thought I, I had it all, right? I was working out, living near the beach, good job, good car, all that. Um, and so I got into the community in January of 2004. It was to read the game. Yeah, a few people. Um, I was there for part of it. I was, you know, the entire kind of mystery in Neil Strauss. And I started in January 2004. And for me as an engineer, I had no moral or like kind of a compunction against learning this. As an engineer, I was like, okay, there's a problem. Let me research the problem, find a solution, and apply it until something works. And that's what I did. And I got through like some of the worst experiences. I'm going to tell you like um, later on, like the night I went home and I cried. I was like, how bad my rejections were. I mean, I mean, honestly, guys, I'm five foot five. I'm not that good looking, and so a lot of women have rejected me. At a certain point, you know, you just learn to accept that's what it is and move on. To be able to better your chances, all right, to stack the deck in your favor. But the reality is, at a certain level, this is a numbers game. This is. Beyond that, though, it's about bettering yourself. Bettering yourself to get women, but just being happy with what you have once you have it. Um, and one thing I realized with, with my students is every time they see me, they're always pretty happy to see me. I think, okay, it's because I'm like the man or whatever. But the reality is I remember um, the first time I went to Chicago, I had a one-on-one -on -one student. And it's like on the last day, he's driving me to the airport. And he's like, oh, JT, 
I was so glad that when I saw you, I was so happy. I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm cool, right? It's like, no, man, I, I saw you. I was so happy that you're unattractive because if you could do it, I can do it. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I felt kind of bad, but you know. <laughs> All right, all right. If it, it, it boosts my students' self-esteem, fair, fair, whatever. Um, but my first real student was actually up in Toronto when a mother called me up. Uh, out of the blue, it wasn't a guy. My first real client was a mother. All right, her son had been harassed in high school by neo Nazis. All right, and so he was very just had never gone on a date. And she asked me to be like the big brother that he never had. I'm like, cool. You know, I get to fly up to Canada. It's like, awesome. And then she's like, and I'll pay you. I'm like, even awesomer. So um, he ended up getting his first date, which is really cool. But one thing I realized is it, it, it's not about picking up women. It's about bettering yourself as a man. And in that process, it's meeting your fears, conquering your fears. Because I, I, I remember reading, I guess, um, on the Facebook group, a couple guys, I don't remember who, was saying like they're scared of rejection, uh, that terrifying experience. And I'm going to tell you, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with being rejected. You know, that gibbering monkey of fear on your back is a voice that you have to learn to ignore. Uh, so this is some before and after pics. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that's me. <laughs> and this is me a little bit after. <laughs> um, and this is. <laughs> well, you don't know. Who's been to my website and my blog, my website? All right. Um, if you go to like various, various of the, the dating <coughs> websites, you know, you, they have obviously pictures of beautiful women, you know, sex appeal and all that. And it's obvious these pictures are stock photos, right? They bought the rights to it to use it. Um, the girls on her website, like, is actually a girl I picked up in real life. She, this is a pinup model uh, that was on Tyra Banks' show. I picked her up, now it's me at home, and later on she said, oh, well, I model. So I'm like, oh, so let's do a model shoot. So if you ever go to, a, like, seriously, you know, if you ever go to her website, all the girls on, like, a website are girls that one of us is actually romantically connected with. And more of me. My job. <laughs> More of my job. <laughs> no, basically, that's one of the things is so many guys, it doesn't matter if you're Asian or you're short, or you're unattractive, or whatever, is the ability to see someone like you, someone even maybe worse off than you, be successful. Because again, guys, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. 